Hello guys, you're welcome back to Photographics Academy. Alright, so today I'm so excited about what we're going to be learning. So this particular one was inspired by Mutawa Creations, amazing photographer. So this was an inspiration I got from him and he said, you know what? Let's jump on it and see what we can create out of it. And this is the result we got at the end of the day. So this is the result we are going for. We will be transforming this image from this to this using this backdrop or this uh background so it's going to be an amazing video very interesting and the beautiful part is that you're also getting this background for free so all you need to do is just to stay here watch it and learn how this is done trust me it will blow your mind one more time big shout out to motawa creations all right so guys let's quickly get started the first thing i'm going to be doing is to crop the image yeah, so I'm just going to crop the image and give her a lot of space. A lot of space, both in the foreground and in the background. But we'll have a lot of headroom. Yeah, something like that. Then we can turn on our content away and press OK. All right, so we'll have that cropped out. Now, the next thing we need to do is to separate our object from our background. Very important. And to do that, I'm going to just pick up my... Yeah. I selection tool and make a selection of my object. So once your object is selected, press right click on your mouse and go to select inverse so you can minus all these areas. Just all of those areas. So just try and minus it. So I wouldn't want this veil over here to be in the image because of how technical it's going to be to get that properly set. And so I feel okay, you know what? Let's just remove it and have our image properly in the way we want it. Okay, so this is the selection we are going to be working with. I'm going to make a duplicate of my background, right click and go to layer via cut. So this allows me to have my object on a separate layer. Let me show you. And my background on a separate layer. But the problem is that my background is at uh, the middle. Is empty and we need to fill it up. So I'm going to hold my control and click on the object to reload the selection. Then go to select, go to modify, go to expand. So you can decide to expand by 20, whatever you want to do. So what that is going to do is that it's going to open up pixels around the object. Then you go to file, you go to file and use content aware to clean off the object in the middle. And it's gone. Let me show you. Our object is gone. So the only challenge now is that I will lose our shadows at the end of the day alongside the object so we'll go back yeah so it means we do not need that much of expansion so we'll go back to select go to modify go to expand so i'm going to be working with four because we need our shadows still selected yeah something like that we need our shadows still selected then we'll go to file fill rather content aware so you understand why we insisted on keeping these shadows much more later so go to ctrl d we now have an empty background yeah don't bother about this this can see so make a duplicate of the background or rather let's just leave that yeah so go to your filter go to blur go to gosh and blur so that wasn't necessary that wasn't necessary except for the fact that we'll lose our shoulder at the end at the end of the day so we'll have to stick with that part so blur the first one and leave the one under not touched so the reason we did this is so that we'll have a clean background, a very clean background. Look at that. A very clean background. And we'll still have for backup this one down here for our shadow. So now it's time to import our background. So how do we do that? Simple. Go over to the background. Uh, unlock it. Use your move tool. Drag it and place it over your objects. So this is the first step. The second step is to fill it in. That I scale it up until it starts matching what you want to get. So I'm just going to scale up. You can decide to place her anywhere that this fit. So to try and repeat the same result we got before, we'll try to position her in the same place. Very good. So I think she was standing on this rock like this. Okay. We press OK. So our first step is done. The second thing is to change the blend mode to hard light. Very important. Change it to hard light. So what this is going to do is that it's going to still retain everything 
allowing you even the opportunity to restore your shadow. I don't know if you are seeing that. Yeah. But if we used over, overlay, it's going to be good, except for the fact that we'll have a lot of haziness in the background. So you see the reason why we didn't use uh, overlay or even soft light in this one. So we'll just stick with hard light. Every other one is going to make it look too contrasty. So we'll do our hard light, press OK. Now, the next thing is to restore our shadows. So I'm going to now use my uh, my mask and just restore the shadows under her gown by creating a mask over the background we used to clean up the whole piece. So we just want to restore the shadows just like this. So we'll also check for other areas that will have good shadows that we want to get back behind the mountain. Yes, very good. All right, so the next thing we want to do is I want to create want to create a color lookup table for the mountain. So the reason is so that everything will also keep looking realistic. So what I'm showing you is exactly how I got my own result. How I got my own result. You can decide to even move on from here, do one or two things. It's looking good already, but this is how I got my own result. So the first color lookup I applied was my horror blue. So I'm going to go to my horror blue and apply my horror blue on the background. So immediately you see it, it starts looking like it's standing out. So we'll have to reduce that. Then the second one we added was our teal orange. So we'll go to teal orange, add a little bit of it. Now our object is looking totally abstract. Why? Because we do not, uh, everything is not blending up together. So what we're going to do is that we're going to make a selection, first of all, of her dress and apply the same horror blue to it. So the reason I'm applying horror, horror blue to it is so that it will have the reflection of the original color of the mountain, which is the horror blue as we have manipulated it to look. So we just want to make sure we'll cast a little bit of that in on her dress here, on her dress. So also make a selection of this area, beautiful. So we'll go to our color lookup, make sure your skin is not in it. All right, so we'll go back to our color lookup and add our horror blue and reduce the opacity, of course. Our horror blue, where are you? Good. So immediately it starts looking like it, but of course it's too much. So what you would do is to reduce it. Very good. And even probably add the same teal oil. Just to have the same colors looking at you. So we'll come to the teal orange. Use your alternate to duplicate your mask and also mask out the dress. But this time around, we need to reduce it as much as possible. You can even check blend mode to see if you get a better blend mode. Now, the next thing we need to do is to darken down her dress a bit. And to do that, we'll create a curves adjustment there. Hold our alternate and reduce it. Yeah, you see the way it's now looking like she's standing there. Why? Because we've matched some colors, but we are not even close to being done yet. So the next thing we need to do is just to color grade her skin. So we'll also go back to the object and make a selection of her skin. We can actually make a duplicate, create a mask for one, go to select, go to color range. So it just gives us her skin tone. Just like that. So have her skin properly selected, press OK. So you can now create your solid color and select any color you want to use and color grade her skin. So I'm going to be using this one, press OK. Use the mask to replace the mask of the solid color and immediately it's gone. Change the blend mode first of all to color. Reduce it, of course. So the reason I'm changing to color is so that if there are areas that are not uniformly in color, it will just blend everything up for me. I'm talking about her skin, then du duplicate the solid color and change the second one to soft light. Of course, we need to reduce this and probably still reduce the color. Very, very good. Now, the next thing to do is to do a global color grading. But before we do that, I feel the floor here is slightly too bright. It's not having a lot of contrast. So I'm going to add some contrast to the image overall using my curves. Just make the shadows slightly darker, make the high highlights slightly brighter. Press Ctrl I, then use your brush to paint it in on those 
areas that need those contrasts, especially on the edges, so that it will even be more detailed. So we also added some of the mountains. And we are good. So I feel my object skin is slightly too dark. So another thing I can do is to brighten it up. And how do I do that? Very simple. Create a cost adjustment layer. Duplicate the mask of the uh, solid colors to get the same mask. Then just brighten her up like that. So we are getting it little by little. The next thing we need to do is to apply a global color grid. Global color gradient. And to do that, we need to use any of the color lookups and also apply our gradient map. So how do we do that? We go over here, go to color lookup. Very important. Look for any color that makes sense to you and just reduce it. So I like what this is doing. Tension uh, is called teal orange, but let's move on and see if we'll have something better. Good. I love what this horror blue is doing. We reduce it as much as we can like that. Beautiful. Then go back to your uh, background. I nearly missed this step. Go to your camera raw. So what I'm doing here is I need to cool down the background a bit too. So I'm pushing it slightly towards the blue tones, something like that. Beautiful. Then you can as well increase the shadows a little and add some contrast. Just to make those rocks even, even uh, have more shadows to be able to complement the object we placed on it. Can even increase the saturation a little but just leave it that way. So you see the dramatic change it creates immediately. We did that, but I feel it's too much. So I'm going to go back by one step, make a duplicate of that background. Uh, this doesn't make sense. So this is what we'll do. We'll go to filter, apply the common raw again, press Ctrl Shift F to load up the opacity of the last filter you applied. Now you can reduce the opacity of the camera raw even without having to duplicate your background. So now we can reduce the opacity of the camera raw we just applied. So I think we are good here. Beautiful. Then press OK. Now let's create the last global color grading before we match everything up. So we'll go to our gradient map, open it up. Of course, we need to change the solid to noise. Make sure your roughness is in 25. Press OK. Go back and change the blend mode to soft light. Reduce your fill as low as you can. I'm leaving my own at 46. Then go back into the gradient map. So come to the randomize and start clicking on it to start giving you color gradings, different versions of color grades that will max with what you have. So you just keep moving it until you get something you want to work with. Mm, I think I love the way this is looking. Press enter, reduce it. This is slightly too much. So looking at the way my object is standing now, I feel she's standing at the tip of the rock, which is not entirely good for composition. So I'm going to scale him a little bit more. Very good. Very good. All right, so press enter. The next thing I want to do is I want to cast her shadow on the floor because if the sunlight is hitting her from the back, I feel my gradient map is too much. Yeah. Trying to see if I'll get something better. I think I like this color more. So if the sunlight is hitting her from the back, then we should be able to see the shadow of that sunlight behind. So what do we do? We create the shadow. So how do we do that? We come to the object over here. Come down to your FX, staying on the layer. Come down to your FX and go to drop shadow. And immediately your blend if is going to load up, press enter. So you have your shadow dropped, but you're not seeing it. Go back to the drop shadow, right click on it and go to create layer. So it's going to separate that shadow and put it in a different layer. Then press Ctrl T, right click on it, press flip horizontally, hold your Ctrl to push it down in that perspective manner. So just look at it. The issue now is that 
the clothes is flipped this side is supposed to be here and this side is supposed to be here so what do we do we right click and go to flip horizontally again we bring it back but the problem is the direction of the shadow is no longer the same so still hold your control and change the direction of the shadow just to match everything you have just the same way it is so push it in a bit but make sure you are seeing that light to be able to show the separation between these two dress we can as well push here in slightly and we are good to go this is good so just reduce the feel a little bit more you may not need to blow that out if you wish to blow it out it's still very much perfect so I, one more thing i want to do with the background is to create uh to make the background slightly darker than the object and to do that i'm picking my rectangular marquee tool then go to your curves and just darken it down look at that so the moment i did that you notice that our object is now coming out even more but the problem is that that uh separation we did is very sharp so what do we do you go to your curves icon then go back to the mask or go to windows and load property it this uh what i just did is going to bring back the property then just feather it out so it looks very soft and seamless of course this is too much we will drop it down so the last thing we need to do is to create a stamp visible layer and move to our camera roll to give it the final look control shift after next e to match everything up then go to your filter go to camera roll so inside of our camera roll we want to cool it down a little beautiful so after cooling it down you may need to reduce your highlight just slightly so that the dress can also calm down then add some little bit of contrast lift your shadows up a little beautiful then move straight to your color mixer drop down the blues slightly increase your yellows so that we'll have that yellow tint over there I think our yellows is not showing up hold it down a lot okay this is good and we're good to go so you can decide to add a little bit of vibrance to it but i think i'm satisfied with what i have you can as well go to your color mixer and check if your cyan is checking at all so i need to reduce it a little it's slightly too much beautiful so the next thing i'll do is to go to my effect and add a little vignette effect to it then go down to my calibration and add some not calibration rather to my effects still there and add some grain to it just to bring the whole thing together and we are good to go so let me show you how we uh how much we've done okay looking at this now the floor is looking too saturated which i do not want so i'll take it a step back press ctrl j to be able to use my mask go to filter go to camera raw filter so it just applies it back then i'll get a mask for it is my brush and remove it from the floor I do not need it on the floor where the yellows are yeah so we can leave the ones that are in the shadows beautiful okay so this is it so i'm going to create a snapshot then show you how the image was looking when we started so this is the image when we came into photoshop and this is the amazing composition we are able to do this is the before this is the after thank you so much for watching practice this on your own image in fact you are getting the background for free like i said before so try putting your own image on the background follow the steps we followed and see how your own is going to look thank you so much for watching make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel and if you subscribe turn on your notification bell to get notified every single time we drop a new video thank you one more time and see you on the next one